Ooh, what is up guys, and of course, welcome back to our Valhalla Pokemon League Week 6. And of course, yeah, you know, Valhalla Pokemon League, hey. And we're going up against, of course, the Los Angeles Nether Kings and Joey. And his team is really, really, really good overall. Now, a quick rundown here was that I was prepping for... Besides that, I see of this team is, of course, Dragonite. Definitely was thinking Dragonite would make it over Magmortar. So my team is a bit more specific design, but at the same time shouldn't matter all that much. We are facing off against, of course, Basimian, Tapu Fini, Alolan, Marowak, Gyarados, Magmortar, and Celebi. Uh, should also be said that Alolan Marowak does kind of hinder my team somewhat, to, because I do, I do pack the likes of, of course, the Tapu Koku, which, of course, will not have a great time versus a Marowak. Now, outside of that, we have, of course, a bit of a bulky right period with Megahorn, Tauros, Body Slam version, the regular one, Life Orb, uh, Tapu Koku, Hidden Power, Ground, and I do believe a Life Orb, Assault Vest, Alolan, Marowak, Kobelion with um, um, the Fighting Berry, I can't remember its name, basically to be able to take a close cover for Bazimion if I'm facing that, and of course, Leftover Mantine with Hidden Power Electric. Now, the things I feared the most with this team, and it was, it was focused mainly on, was that I can't status anything, which means that Poison Jab won't be too reliant on Alolan, of course, Marowak, and also, of course, Gyarados can set up against everything, Dragonite can set up against anything, which isn't the team, luckily, and, of course, whether or not I can stop a Scarf Pizimium, which was, was definitely a factor, and, of course, can I deal properly with an Alolan Marowak and not lose too much momentum by it? Because it's a Pokemon that naturally does shake me really well, and while I do can fin it off really nicely with, of course, Rhyperior, it still is a Pokemon that is annoying, and I'm going to, of course, treat it as such. Now, <laughs> now of course, with that said, um, possible lead. Pesimia seems to be a very good lead for him, and, of course, I did think that possibly Marowak could just lead off with Stealth Rocks. That's a possibility. So with that in mind, Rhyperior is going to be my go-to lead. And basically, I'm going to try to throw up rocks, hoping that his Feeny is not a defog set. So with all this in mind, let's, of course, go into the match. So we do get, of course, the first prediction right. He starts off with Pazimian, which is really, really, really good. As we start off with, of course, Desotroya. And yeah, just rocks. I mean, close combat is possibly a 2 hit kill, depending on his set. And that damage definitely shows me one thing. It is an advent version. So close combat is most certainly going to be a 2 hit kill, as he's going to bring Twin Mold, and this is of course dangerous in all fashions possibly really. Gyarados can definitely get go for a plus one directly, and the only thing for Pokemon can deal with is of course Mantine. Mantine is the only switching I have here who could arguably of course deal with it, what was it, the power electric, but also due to of course the water absorb are immune to of course the, um, well, the waterfall. So anyway, Tapu Fini comes in instead. Um, that's scary because I don't believe I have the right set to fin it off properly with my man sign. Uh, but uh, you know, I'll do my very best. As stated here, we do have Hidden Power Electric. It's a factor. Sadly, I don't have Toxic and considering the matchup, that seems really, really, really redundant. So with that in mind, I'm going to hard switch out and go directly for my Alolan Marowak. Um, no, Alolan Muck. Damn it. Close enough. As we see Defog. It's quite alright. I'm directly going to go for a Poison Jab. Go for getting so much damage as possible. And if, of course, Gyarros comes in, since it is floating, it could very well, of course, get a Poison with a 57% chance because he's not affected by the terrain. So, he switched off Gyarros, which is great. I really was a bag in there. Come on. No, I think I went for Knockoff first time. Sorry about that. Knockoff is first time. Seeing it come in, knocking off, of course, the Leftovers. Now I'm going to go for Poison Jab, hoping that he would try to set up. He said it directly goes for the Earthquake. And while it doesn't do terribly uh, in that fashion, it still does a raw, well, more than I wanted to. But Poison Jab will score the Poison, which is great. And I stated it is because he's floating, he's a flying type, and he's not affected by terrain. But yeah, I clearly can't take another one of those, and I need to get out. I cannot withstand this. So Mantine is my only switch in. Mantine is probably the only Pokemon that could possibly check this Pokemon over again. If I lose Mantine, I lose the match. As we're gonna see about and. That's okay, I am fully defensive, so I can just roost here. Um, basically, because I am slower, I am able to take the hit, and then, of course, retaliate with the likes of actually just uh, surviving. I was a bit unsure whether or not it would have been a Jolly set or not, but that's definitely Jolly, as, of course, uh, he doesn't do 50% on us, and, uh, well, I could KO him in return. Trust me, Poison is in that area where he can't do anything to me. So, with that in mind, I do believe I go directly here for him, Power Electric, as we're gonna see 
Maxi uh, or Navi, sorry, um, close enough. Uh, the Celebi, and uh, yeah, we don't do any damage there. I mean, Leftovers does sell the worst. It's back to full. I can't touch Celebi either. So uh, I do believe I go here for an Ice Beam. Uh, as he sets up rocks, they are here to stay, possibly because I do not have a defog on this, and I showcase pretty much my whole set here. Ice Beam doesn't do anything, and I'm starting to wonder why I actually stayed in. Would have been very, very, very smart of me, of course, is switching out, as that is exactly what he does. Uh, and goes to Sora. Uh, I do believe I myself switch out too, realizing that this is a bad situation. Um, Sora by Jordan, by the way, guys, after work and all, it is what it is. Uh, yeah, I go directly for Tauros, that's right. As uh, so I'm gonna go directly for a body slam, do as much damage as possible. No, I do for wild shards. Hey, close enough. And that's not a 2 hit kill, uh, as he's gonna retail that with, of course, a moon blast. And uh, it pushes me down, it pushes me down quite a lot actually. As uh, I'm now gonna of course force myself to go for body slams over the wild charge. Because I need it. it. It's basically what I have to do is basically get some damage here. As he tries to of course, hoping that I go for another wild charge and get myself down. And I do believe it's a very very fair um, execution there to go in for that. Because since of course the recoil would have killed me anyway. Of course if not then life would finish me up. Uh, sadly gets that wrong as of course body slam does a lot of damage to him so he's gonna now of course sack off his uh, gyarados and Tor's gonna get of course one kill for the match so that's great uh, bit unfortunate to get so much residual damage onto me but you know it is what it is um, it is super unfortunate that that's how it transpires so monkey's gonna come in of course the bazimian being scarfed and all I'm screwed anyway here and I can't survive the rocks so I have to sack him and uh, Vizimia is gonna knock me out, and that's that sucks. I really like Tauros here, so it's unfortunate I lost him like that. As uh, I'm gonna send in my, um, he's gonna send in his Magmortis. I send in my Five Horn. Now I was pretty sure that the close combat, the close combat is a guarantee kill from this area. So is Stone Edge, and I did decide to go for a Stone Edge here, as he's scarfed, and he's gonna fire blast me, and that's um, that's that. That was bad. That was definitely... I did not suspect him here to be Scarfed whatsoever. As now I know he's Scarfed, which is good. But at the same time, I, I'm not in a good spot at all. As um, he's gonna send in Navi here. I do believe I go directly for Rock Blast here. And I only get two hits. Uh, and that's not gonna help. But I'm predicting him here though to Synthesis. And going to stay in. I'm gonna go for the aggressive play. Gonna go for Mega Horn. Hoping that he's Synthesis. If it doesn't do that, he's gonna destroy my Desultroya. And that's basically it. So we get at least that right. He does go for recover, which is great because that means Megahorn will kill if we can connect it. And the big question is, can we? Yes. Yes, yes, we can. Fuck you, Celebi. That's <laughs> we're gonna knock him out. So we got that one right. And I mean, that's important consider, of course, how awful, awfully, awfully we lost, of course, our um, Five Horn here. As he's gonna send in Sora, uh, being, of course, the Tapafini. We can. We can't necessarily touch this thing. I could go for Earthquake, hoping that he would go for Surf and kill me. I really have pure use, of course, my uh, Rhyperior as um, I go directly for Solgo. As he goes for Surf, and we're gonna, of course, soak that with the Water Absorb. And I was feeling, you know what? Let's start going for, of course, the Hidden Power Electric. We've seen Surf, um, possibly Moonblast and Defog. So I did not suspect him to also have Calm Mind. And I was like, yeah. That's um, that's no good. I mean, Hidden Power Electric here will do ish. It, it does damage, but at the same time, Leftovers will eventually do the Calm Mind in mind, trap him so well off that he will, of course, able to deal with me properly. So that's how I feel, you know, he's gonna keep setting up. So I'm gonna send him Brain Brown, I'm gonna send him a Tapu Goku, and uh, try to, of course, um, get this one right. So we get the train out of the way, which is really important, as he, sadly, I should say, go for the Moonblast. And we get a lot of damage on the Koku. Um, bit too much, really. And uh, this is basically what I started feeling, you know, this is maybe not my best game. As I'm gonna go Hidden Power Ground here, predicting, predicting of course, the Marowak to come in. So we get that one right. Uh, what is unfortunate here is that... Um, yeah, while it is a good hit on it, I'll keep going for it. Did not see him trying to try to get it to survive against, of course, the monkey. As Hidden Power Ground now will do nope. Had I gone for Thunderbolt, it would have killed him. But at the same time, who Thunderbolts against the Marowak, right? As uh, I'm now forced to switch out. I'm actually extra belt. Sorry about that. 
and not, of course, a life orb, as we're gonna go Desutroya. He goes right for a close combat here. Basically, I am second Desutroya here. I don't have a switch in for this. Uh, I really don't. I was hoping I was gonna take this one better, but I am not. I mean, it was clear from the beginning, it is an adamant set, and... Uh, the Simeon has a lot of attack. I mean, it's 120, stuff like that. It's basically the same level as Sok. So, it's not too shabby, as of course, it's gonna knock out my right period. So, that's a second kill for the Pazimian, which I really, really, really considered a threat for this battle. But, of course, with Scarf in mind, things got tougher. And a lot. So, anyway, one lucky thing here is that we know he's locked into Force Wolves Combat. So we can easily send in Solgo and uh, try to manage this situation. Which basically means that I'm... I think I went for an offensive, I was trying to remember how this game went by. As Sora comes in, uh, I'm pretty sure I went for a surf or something like that. Uh, no, I double switch. Hey! I, that was with Arcel. Awesome! That was that was that was not good. That was not bad play. Hey! I, I saw that one coming, clearly. Trying like I said, I tried to remember the game. But it was settled two weeks ago since I actually had this battle. So I've been falling a bit behind on the schedule. So anyway, I have a golden opportunity here, clearly. Um I do believe I go for the predictor play. I think I go directly for a poison jab. I'm pretty sure about that. Uh, yeah, we do. As it won't kill the Basimian, it's not even close actually. And um, basically here, I don't have a switch in for Basimian either. Uh, so my best bet here is actually to go into Rain Bronze and sack it, and then hope that Manta can kind of do something against it. Now, I do have Shadow Sneak here, but the game is by far already over, and. Uh, Really, 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 there is nothing I can do as he's gonna lock himself in the earthquake, which I felt was great because that means, of course, that Solgo gets a pretty decent opening. But trust me, guys, there is no way around it. I am definitely going to lose this game. There is nothing I can do to stop this Basimian or the type of Fini, even. I mean, Fini just wins. Uh, he's gonna double switch here and actually go to his forest, which being, of course, his Mag Mortar. Uh, I do believe I switch out myself, go into, of course, my Alolan Muck. Uh, yet again, hoping for the Fini. I mean, that's my best call here, really, to try to do something against it. But I am no longer in an area where I think I can take anything from this Mag Mortar. And luckily, he does lock himself into Fire Blast, which potentially means that... Um, you know what? One thing that does bother me already is why didn't I just go for Skull here? Uh, instead of switching out. I really mean that. So anyway, he's gonna actually go for another Fire Blast, as I do go for a Roost here. Uh, we do take it really well. I mean, we still are a special defensive Manti. Manti is a beast when it comes to this kind of environment, and it's, it clearly shows. But um, at this point, I mean, there is nothing I can do. Tebafini can potentially just start uh, setting up, and that will be a wrap. One thing that is funny, though, is had I actually dealt with Tefini, I could very well have won this match, actually. There was basically only Fini that was checking me properly. Now, it does have something that I should be mentioning here, and that is that... Uh, his Alola Marowak actually has a twist, and uh, I really, really, really can only appreciate it for what it is, because at this time, it is just hoping that I don't lose 4-0 and can do something. And he's actually going to switch out here, predicting me to go for another Hidden Power Electric, which is totally going against me, because that means that Marowak comes in, and um, <laughs> he actually has Thunder Punch, which of course is definitely enough to kill me here, because he has Fit Club. So, it is unfortunate here. I don't believe this is one of my stronger games whatsoever. I definitely felt um, defensively checked more than I wanted to, and I lose here 4 0 due to it. Yoi plays a really smart game, though. But yeah, if I had to be, oh, how do you say, uh, a bit critical to myself, I definitely would say that getting damage on my Lola Mach against the Jaros was really unfortunate, since of course I had Mantine. Man Mantine could definitely have dealt with that better since of course I had hidden power electric I don't believe at that point that uh, it was a threat because considering of course Tabofini and of course Mag Mortar there was a potential issue with that in mind I was actually Black Sludge not a Salt Fest so yeah I, I do believe that was a bad play the same thing with uh, my Tauros here I don't believe that um, going for Wild Charge versus Fini was worth it. it was definitely the wrong time trying to do something like that uh, I would have been much better off trying to actually send in a Lolan Muck at that point too. So, I get a lot of damage on Pokemon that should not take damage. Even Tabu Koku got, of course, a lot of damage onto it, so failing to, of course, um, with Tabu Fini in mind, to actually get a Moonlight onto his face plus one. There were a lot of options here where I basically, I believe I had the right play in mind, but didn't... I didn't do the right plays at the times that I needed. I definitely did well against his defensive plays. I did respond properly 
but that happened later in the game. It did early game. I got a lot of damage on Pokemon that should not get damaged, and um, of course losing Cobalion to a Scarf Magmortar, yeah, it sucks. Because I really thought that my play was the right one. He U-turned to Magmortar, I felt Cobalion was a very clear response, and I didn't feel like switching into Manti with Thunderbolt in mind. Uh, but should probably try to bait him with that, so it's my fault, it's a bad play in general. And uh, I think Joey plays this game a lot smarter than I do, and overall deserves to win the match for that very reason. Am I disappointed? No, um, but I feel that I should, like I said, have played smarter. But, you know, hindsight is 50-50. At the time, I thought I was playing well, but I definitely can see the fold of my ways throughout this battle. Joey plays a more defensive uh, game against me. I should definitely have tried to replicate that instead of trying to offensively check him when he didn't even try to do that himself. And I paid dearly for it. So, Joey, GG, good job, buddy. You played this game close to flawless, and for me, yeah, I need to I need to become better. I clearly do. So uh, yeah. Thank you of course so much guys for watching. We're free for free now. We're still good. Have a nice day. Bye. <laughs>